I made some changes to the Adam RC Dolphin from my first video and uh, I added a uh, Matek F722 flight controller which I'm not using to control flight I'm just using it to generate an on-screen display and then um, paired with that I have a, a GPS antenna from race day quads and a fox ear T-Rex camera. Those are feeding into a uh, small DVR that's on board. And uh, it's only recording 640 by 480, but it's certainly adequate for recording uh, the miles per hour, uh, which we're trying to figure out what that is. I, I tried to uh, read it through the goggles and it was it's just jumping around too much and it was too hard to fly and try to figure out what the uh, speed was at the same time so I figured the best way to do that was to just record everything okay this is the on-screen display that we'll be using uh, on the left side um, upper left is the uh, number of satellites that we currently have Second number down is miles per hour flight speed, which is primarily what we're interested in. Uh, the third number is supposed to be the throttle position. It wasn't working for some reason. And um, the bottom number is the battery voltage, which is a four cell. So it starts a little over 16 volts, and then we're done when we get to 14 volts. On the right side is the elevation above sea level. The field is approximately 800 feet above sea level. So on this picture, we're only at 64 feet altitude. So on these speed runs, we'll be going straight down the runway, as you see there, which is going into the wind. That's the upwind uh, leg. And we'll try to capture the miles per hour sort of in the middle. It jumps around a lot, so it's kind of a judgment call. Then I'm going to be making a right turn. We'll be going parallel to the runway downwind. I'll take another reading, and then we'll average those two to get the, uh, <clears throat> the true flight speed. Uh, the first run is going to be at 50% throttle, and then each one will be increased about 10% after that until we get to 100%. Okay, this is the first run at 50% throttle. Looks like the upwind leg is about 60. And uh, doing a U-turn. Downwind leg is 74. So that would give us 67 for the average. Okay, 60%, looks like about 63 upwind. Seventy-seven downwind for an average of seventy. Okay, at seventy to eighty percent throttle, looks like about sixty-seven upwind. 81 downwind for an average of 74. <music> 80 to 90 percent throttle, about 73 upwind, 84 downwind for an average of 78.
Okay, full throttle. About 77. Upwind. 87 downwind. Total 82. I decided to make one more run at 100% throttle and the stock motor failed just as we crossed the north-south runway. Fortunately, I did not lose control. The BEC was still working. So the, uh, the stock motor was definitely overheated. Some of the magnets became demagnetized from getting too hot. The um, the Adam RC motor is a 2306, 1800 kV, turning a 74 prop, I believe. And uh, the only thing that I had that was close to that was a T motor F40, 2400 kV, which turns a 54 prop. So I tried the larger prop on it, just drew too much current. So we'll have to go with the 54 prop. But um, to prevent the motor from overheating the next time, I tried to get the motor further away from the, the fuselage body and uh, the kit comes with a couple of 3D printed motor mounts, which I did not use the first time around. The one in the picture is the shorter one. There's another one which is, is twice as thick. So I used the thicker one and then instead of the uh, laser cut plywood motor plate. I made a motor plate out of eighth inch aluminum to mount the motor to. Hopefully that will act kind of like a heat sink. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, we should uh, fly it this week and uh, do some more measurements on uh, flight speed.